नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम टू पी गुरु चैनल आई एम योर होस्ट श्री आयर जॉइनिंग मी टुडे इज उत्सव चक्रवर्ती एंड सेहून किम यू नो बोथ ऑफ आवर गेस्ट एंड वी आर गोइंग टू बी टॉकिंग अबाउट व्हाट हैपेन यस्टरडे बाय वे ऑफ प्रोटेस्ट एंड एंड वी हैव अ कपल ऑफ स्लाइड्स टू शो यू इन केस यू मिस्ड व्हाट हैपेन एंड देयर हैज बीन अ स्टेटमेंट फ्रॉम द वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एंड द a person who is going to be running for president in november kamala harris we're going to cover all that and more and also we're going to look at why or who is uh, you know supporting indirectly or directly with from within the government for all these flag burning people so let's welcome utsav and sehun utsav sehun namaskar and welcome to p guru's channel how are you namaskar shri very happy to be here as always Thank you so much for having us. Uh, my pleasure, Sehun, and thank you for coming at such short notice. Uh, this was an important uh, uh, discussion that we needed to have because what happened yesterday, and and so I'm going to let you lead. And while you are doing that, I'm just going to uh, hide myself for just a moment and lo- load up the slide deck. I forgot to do that. I'm going to load that slide deck. So over to you. Set the context for us today, and I'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you, Sri. <clears throat> So yesterday was a very unique day. Uh, I have been in the city, the Washington D.C., for 24 years, and never before I have seen the kind of things that happened yesterday in the form of protests uh, that that happened when uh, Prime Minister of Israel Benjamin Netanyahu was in Washington D.C. Uh, attending and addressing the U.S. Congress. So there was, uh, as expected, there was massive rallies across uh, D.C., especially near the Capitol Hill, but what was unique is that the the pro- so called protesters i would put it in air quotes uh, approached the union station uh, now those of you who are familiar with washington dc would know the union station is a historical uh, railway station in washington dc is the main uh, railway station in washington dc and has a uh, a very uh, historical prominence and it has a really tall flagpole with the american flag that flies there all the time Uh, it's in direct view of the capital literally two blocks from the capital and uh, uh, what happened was that these protesters went and climbed up that pole in front of this historical building uh, and brought down the american flag and then in front of everybody including the media they burnt it now there were literally hundreds of people watching and cheering as they were burning the american flag now you know as i said i have been in this town for 24 years uh, and i have never seen this level of what i would call outrage uh, that it's it's worthy of outrage uh, that that has happened in the past so it's something that uh, that uh, really really uh, affects us all uh, the impact of this actually is far more than it is being made out to be uh, as expected i mean we tweeted about it on behalf of hindu action uh but as expected there was not much coverage in the national media which we kind of predicted given the current situation of the media in this country and obviously there was not much coverage in political discussions along uh, the mainstream channels but uh, as as you know she we, we did see a statement from vice president kamla harris uh, and you know i'm sure you're going to discuss this further Um, yes, I'll come to that in just one moment. I want uh, opening observations from Sehun. Sehun, you've been in the United States for many, many years, and and I've also not seen the flag being, you know, burned this way. It's a real disrespect. And and again, what is the point here? U.S. is has allowed a lot of leeway for all these protesters to express their anger. And and basically, my problem here is they always do this thing. They'll first do the crime. but when the response comes that's when they start getting outraged and play victim this this cycle has to stop so this is just my con- uh, comments my observations sehun your opening comment because i'm going to then share the vp's uh, letter uh, as a statement as well as some other things that are happening in the presidential polls over to you sehun well thank thank you uh, shri ji and, and thank you also for for joining us here I think I'm just going to you know keep it pretty brief. Um and I think all that needs to be said is I I completely agree with you Shriji and everything that you said. But the only thing that I would add on to what you said was that you know it it seems like we are seeing a normalization of such uh violence of such uh, behavior 
all around. And, and, and again, if you were to have asked this question 10 or 20 years ago, um, if, if something like this were to happen, obviously the answer as I see it would be, would be, well, that's crazy. It can never get this bad. But fast forward to today, we've witnessed that it not only has gotten this bad, but now it has been normalized up to a point where I, I personally have spoken to some of the uh, participants, actually, and some of the uh, observers were just simply just walking around in that area. And the vibe is that, you know, no one felt like they could really think for themselves. There is a narrative that, uh, that needs to be kept. And if that narrative is not kept, Right, you will either be ostracized or sometimes reportedly uh, worse. And so, um, I think that's something that needs to be remembered and to be thought of by um, everyone that's involved, including those who are uh, rightfully concerned about uh, this activity. And and also at the same time, you have to remember this this was brewing for some time within that camp, and I think. Unfortunately, uh, with the trend that it's going at, at the rate that we are seeing, um, it's only going to get worse. And I, I, I pray to God that it's uh, we, all of us uh, are kept, kept safe from it. Thank you so much, Sehun. And I'm going to now forward this slide to the next one. Just give me one second. I got the, one, the wrong one. There you go. And I'm going to forward the slide to the next one where uh, Vice President Kamala Harris has issued a statement about what happened at the Union Station in D.C. He said that was despicable and she condemns any individuals associating with the brutal terrorist organization Hamas, which has vowed to annihilate the state of Israel and kill Jews. Pro-Hamas graffiti and rhetoric is abhorrent and we must not tolerate it in our nation. Blah, 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 blah. Like condemning burn, um, burning of the American flag. How much of this, it's a question to you, how much of this is the late realization on behalf of, on the part of Kamala, that the presidency is like slipping away. There's one poll that says that she's doing even worse than Joe Biden. So one thing I keep this uh, on because I want to point out something that in the sure, state, sure, sure. Uh, if you notice, they make a major effort in the second paragraph, first sentence, I condemn any individuals associating with this brutal terrorist organization. They never mentioned the word organizations. And therefore, here's my question uh, to our administration, to our media, especially our media, because this is important. And, and th this, this question is for both, both political parties and the media that is on both, you know, favors both sides. Why have we not come out with the names of the individuals and the organizations that organize this flag burning, if I, for lack of a better phrase? We need to know the names of the organizations that organized it. That's number one, because this condemnation is condemning only individuals, which is very important for us to note. The second question is, why? who are those who are funding those organizations? That needs to come out. Because what I saw, many, many of these people were not native to Washington, D.C. They came in from far away cities in organized buses, in, in buses that were brought from different parts of the country. So who is funding this? And, and all these things, that's why it is important to know the organizations involved in doing these protests and burning the flag and who are the people funding those. And then, you know, I will have a few more questions as we go forward Shri, in this in this conversation. Yeah, thank you. So I just want to add to this. Many organizations uh, tweeted it out on their own uh, accounts. And I'm going to show one such organization. This is in public uh, space, public domain. So I'm just merely showing what it is. This is one organization and we know some of these people and they do not reside in Washington, D.C. So this is, again, basically backing up what Utsav just made as an observation. Now, I want to come back to the main point. Utsav, Kamala Harris was not present when that address by Benjamin Netanyahu was being delivered in the Congress. OK, so uh, and we've seen pictures of us, her with Alex Soros who is believed to be behind all this stuff. I'm, I'm putting it as double quotes and belief, but you can believe me or choose to not believe me, but I believe I should say that in double quotes. So there has been a picture of Soros with Kamala Harris, and I don't know if this is true or not. Like tens of millions were donated by this individual alone to the Kamala Harris campaign in the last few days, because she claimed a number like 89 or $99 million. As soon as the uh, endorsement happened. 
Look, that part is not important. The part, part that is important is I am seeing Kamala Harris trying to do some serious monkey balancing, and I think she is not succeeding at all. This is why I say that is on the one side she skips the address. On the other side, she comes out with a strong statement. In fact, there's a video also of yours. If you're on Twitter, you cannot miss it. Kamala Harris has splashed it all over the place. I'm going to put it in the reference links right after this video uh, so that you have a chance to look at that address where she comes out very strongly for Israel, Israel's right to exist and right to defend itself. All that stuff, everything that you know, US has been saying officially, she has said all that stuff. The question here is, has she damaged herself badly in this one 24-hour period? Because during you know politics, 24 hours is a long time in politics. I'll ask you the same question, Sehun, first Utsav and then you. So th there are a couple of things we need to, uh, you know, I, I'm saying this with a smile because uh, it is, you know, when, when uh, Alex Soros' picture was posted with, uh, with Kamala Harris and Soros posted it, uh, you know, there was a response from Elon Musk which I, I'm, not, I'm paraphrasing it, which essentially meant, um, says that, uh, well, at least it's good that we know who are the puppet masters and how quickly they have come out. Uh, so, so I'm paraphrasing here, so uh, please don't sue me for, for uh, quoting anybody here. Uh, but so that's, that's you. So we, we kind of guess uh, and we can see that what's going on here. But what is even in, more interesting is that we need our media and our researchers uh, in public interest to also come out. And that's why I was saying in my first two questions, it's important to know the names of the organizations that did this flag burning and who funds them. Because you will be surprised to see the names that come out who fund these organizations that were involved in the flag burning. So it is important that our media does this job and, and no matter which political party they are aligned with or support, this is an important in conversation to be had in public. Optics. Thank you, and and I'll hold you, uh, you hold your feet on in fi on fire for uh, saying whether the brand Kamala is getting a beating. You can hold on to your answer. I'll come back to you in just a moment. Sehun, your thoughts? Well, my thoughts uh, again, it resonates heavily with what what Otsa said. But but again, I would like to just mention something it, that's it's which I, I I guess caught the eyes of the public, but not at the same time, which is the fact that Kamala Harris was essentially invisible during the time of Joe Biden, before Joe Biden even uh, you know, mentioned that he was going to drop out of the race, which was predicted uh, for many months, by, uh, actually. You, know, you, you didn't see anything uh, that, that Kamala Harris did in the public. I mean, if you, if you, if you were to ask anybody, uh, literally, quite literally anybody, to name five things that Kamala Harris has done over the period of the three years that they're in power, they will have a very, very difficult time or they won't be able to. Why? Because she was just out of the picture. Some say, well, you know, look, that's what the vice presidents do, yada, yada, yada. Well, look, hate, love him or hate him, you always saw Pence doing something and the vice presidents before that, right? They were always visible. And so <clears throat> on top of that, though, um, the Biden administration actually has... Uh, unfortunately for them, has, have lost their traditional um, support group, which is the Palestinian crew, and you have, uh, and, and you have the rest of society. And, and I say rest of society because it's, it's pretty much mixed, right? You have the, the heavy, heavy Jewish population, uh, the, the overall Christian uh, population, the, the, uh, the traditional American, American crowd, right, as, as many know it, and, and the rest of society. And they're, they're facing a dilemma where they're losing support from the both sides. And at this point, um, if Kamala, Kamala Harris is in a position where if she says anything, um, she'll be condemned anyways. And so um, this flag, and I think this flag burning um, incident really was, uh, to me, it, it's, it looks like her campaign's desperate attempt to A, a stay relevant and to also it's sort of, to me, it just looks like a sort of a, a, a way for them to appeal to the people in the right that, hey, when it comes to our American values and such and such, uh, as, as such and such, we do stand with you. We, we, we will make a ground for you to sort of stand on if, you were to, if I were to become president. But as, as you have said before, and as uh, Utsav has shared, um, you know, it's she, it's, it just, it just seems now that the narrative that's out there is Kamala Harris and her camp 
and these organizations which oddly weren't, uh, weren't mentioned have too much skeletons in their closet. And because that is the case, I, they are, uh, you know, the people on the other side, um, AKA it could be us, it could be anybody else that we know or our people on the quote unquote the right side is, is in a position to just sit back, relax and see them sort of burn on their own. And that's the narrative, unfortunately, for the Harris campaign or even that entire side that, um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's a huge problem that they're facing. And, and at this point, you know, w after yesterday, I, I am, I'm more than positive that um, they're, facing, it, it, they're facing a future where they really don't know what to do or where to go. And, 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 and I, I think that's, that's, another, that's another important thing to remember before November. And I will say just one more thing uh, in regards to that is that when it comes to these organizations, you know, uh, these organizations, and I won't name whom, but I'm sure our, our great viewers know who they are. Uh, they've, been, they've been in the United States since the time of Moses, right? Uh, they've been there in some way, shape or form. Every, uh, they, they've been involved in our government. Uh, their lobbying and personal relations and whatnot. But it seems like, as I said before in, the, in, in my first speech, uh, the push for their narrative is becoming a lot more um, broad and, and a lot more aggressive. And as, as you both well know, that when somebody has to be a lot more aggressive with their narrative, either they're really, really sure about it, which I don't think is the case this time, or they're extremely desperate because they're losing support. Um, and, and I, I think that's, that's a reality that we see uh, today on, on, on that entire sphere. Um, I hope you're, uh, you're right, Sehun. I think certainly I see the merit in what you're saying. Uh, I'm going to come back to you again in just one minute. What's up? Question is, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Do you think brand Kamala is taking a beating? Yes, two days ago, borders are. They really hung it on her neck and she couldn't shake it off. Axios walked back with the same author, the same author who wrote that she was the border czar in 2021, walks it back two days ago saying that, no, she was never really the border czar. Wait a minute, you, you assigned that moniker. <laughs> How can you walk back from that? So, Brand Kamala, is it taking a beating? I would say yes. I would say it is taking a beating. Uh, and this is personal analysis. I, I don't represent anybody's opinion or anything like that. In my personal opinion, I believe that Brand Kamala is taking a beating. The timing of this flag burning and the events that unfolded before that and right after that are not helping her, number one. As far as the border czar question is concerned, you know, it, it really is a very important question that needs to be answered because the same media organizations, the same talking heads, the same you know, believable sources that have been so far for the last four years talking about how Kamala was taking great care of her border uh, and was actually in charge of taking care of everything in the southern border are today saying that she had nothing to do with the border. And you can literally find, say, as you said, the same people making tweets and photos and this and that about it all gone overnight. Uh, that tells us two things. Number one, that the campaign is not doing well, as I said. And number two, the amount of leverage these people have in the mainstream media and the amount of disinformation that is out there, uh, that is the part that should be more worried about because it really boggles everybody's mind to see that it's, you know, a reputable newspaper, reputable media channels overnight just flip it as if nobody saw what that was being said two years ago. It's just amazing. So uh, I'll leave us with one thought, one question, last question to both of you. Uh, back to you, uh, Sehun. Where do we go from here? Kamala Harris, do you think um, now the group will say, wait a minute, uh, she, she claims that she has the support of all the delegates that Biden gave to her when he endorsed her. This is what she says, right? Is there going to be a review of all these things at the convention, because that's what Obama wants. And, and people in the know tell me, and I could be wrong about this, people in the know tell me that Kamala Harris might be the party's choice or the, 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 the choice of many, but Obama owns DNC. I don't know if it's true or not, 
Tell me what's going to happen, what to expect at the open convention. First, you, Sehun, then Utsav, and then we'll call it a wrap. Well, uh, as to that question, look, I, I people have claimed many things, right? But what we do know is that, you know, whether the DNC is tomorrow, a month from now, or two months from now, it really doesn't look um, good for them uh, at, at this point. No matter who they, no matter who they place or who they. Uh, you know, who they replace on uh, in the place of Kamala, which actually is being talked about widely among journalist circles, right? A lot of people are actually sk speculating, hey, is Kamala Harris going to actually last? It's a question that's circulating out there, right? And it's, and rightfully so. And so, um, it, but at this point, after that incident and after this whole fiasco that we're seeing in Washington, D.C., I just don't see, I personally, I just don't see a, a, a way out for them to have an easy path towards the election. Now, does that mean that uh, the the other side, the, the, the right wing or the Trump side is guaranteed to win just because of this? I don't know. But I, will, I will not say who will win or lose. But what I will say is this, is that the, the Harris uh, camp has been linked with people, organizations, and, and the sad part of it, it is, is that a lot of people have become collateral damages because of it, right? Including a lot of people within um, that camp who I'm sure they joined out of genuine reasons. But unfortunately, in my, in my view, they're being used for uh, their ideological purposes. Um, and, and going back to these organizations, uh, you know, these organizations have propped themselves as these champions of human rights. And, and to a point where even in the State Department, when uh, it's asked about, right? Um, the State Department, un, you know, unsurprisingly, would never ever give you a, a good set answer, um, and that's a complaint out of all journalists. I can I can guarantee you that. But, but then again, it is it never nevertheless it is a problem that you don't really hear an answer regarding that, right? Um, that's one thing to remember. I think the final thing to remember in terms of the future of DNC is that they are reaping where they have harvested, meaning that um, because these organizations have no choice, right, um, to uh, link themselves with this ideology and these camp of people who have caused all this damage to a point that Kamala Harris has to come out and condemn them, right? Um, they are paying a price that is probably going to cost them the election or, it, or it, so it is viewed by an increasing number of people within society. And the other thing about the DNC is that I, I can I can tell you I can tell you one thing is is that the DNC uh, gathering was supposed to be a celebratory event where they were going to see the guaranteed continuation of the Biden administration or anybody from that camp. And it's turned from that to okay, what do we do from now on? And even if Obama or I don't know whatever whatever entity out there controls it, really do not have um, a full control as to what's going to happen in the future. And that hasn't really happened before, right? They will try to control as much as possible. And, and again, to a point, I will say the same thing about RNC. But, um, you know, that's, it, that narrative is, is becoming a lot more visible within the DNC crowd. And we're just going to have to see what happens. But it, you know, it, I, and I, I speak on behalf of a lot of people out there. I guarantee you, it really doesn't look good for their side. Thank you, Sehun. Uh, Utsav, uh, is there going to be a twist in the tail? So I give you my opinion, Sri. I think the twist in the tail would be with the vice president pick, not with uh, Kamala. I think the DNC and the big wigs in the organization may not be as much Obama himself. Uh, he may be unhappy. He may be uh, grumbling somewhere down there. Uh, but I think the more or less every, you saw the picture who Kamala, uh, you know, who was with Alex Soros. So so I think uh, the, the, the presidential candidate from the DNC is more or less final. Uh, that is my thing. I, I think Hillary is not happy about it. Like imagine how Hillary will feel if somebody who was so junior to her uh, who probably had no support in the Democratic primaries, not probably, who had no support in the Democratic primaries, uh, who barely Democrats identify with, ends up becoming the first woman president of U.S. in a possible future. Uh, I'm not saying it's happening, but I'm saying there's a possibility how Hillary would feel about it. So there are many people in the Democratic Party who are very unhappy with Kamala's uh, uh, positioning. But at this point, I think 
it's going to be Kamala. The vice presidential pick will be very important because they will pick somebody from one of the battleground states, which they hope they can salvage uh, in the upcoming elections in November. But before I leave, I just want to underline one thing because our conversation was about the flag burners. I want to reiterate and, and underline this for everybody who is watching it uh, in our audience and if the media is watching it across the country, uh, please look up the names of the organizations that have been supporting these groups that, uh, that were flag burning in Union Station. And also it might be good to look into their uh, association with the, anybody in this administration or the State Department. So it's worth looking into all of these details. Thank you so much. And, and what Utsa was referring to, and I'll just do like 30 seconds. There are eight swing states now. Nevada, Arizona. Uh, then you have uh, Ohio, Iowa, Florida, uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, and, and a new one, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, I think, is the key because that's where the attempt was made on the life of Trump. I'm kind of guessing that it'll be Shapiro who will be her vice presidential running mate, who's, I think, the governor of uh, Pennsylvania, if I'm not wrong. So we'll, we'll see how these things go. But I'd like to bring you two gentlemen back again in a, in a short uh, period of time. And we'll discuss this a little bit further as this campaign shapes up. Thank you once again, gentlemen. Namaskar and talk to you soon. Namaste. Thank you.